Hey everyone, and welcome to the setup video for the Mango Mini router, essentially. The actual model number is somewhat really weird, GL-INET, and then a load of numbers, MT300N-V2. So it's a 300 Mbps wireless router. And essentially this is the actual router. Please excuse the mess. Um, I'm doing a bit of testing here, so I can't really be bothered to put all this stuff away just yet. So essentially what you have is this is the small router. And once again, just compare it to the size of an actual Apple TV remote. And you only have three cables going in. So one's your power. And as you can see, I'm running that directly off the actual back of the router. Now that USB port, I believe is just like a, a service or diagnostic port. It's not an actual um, import if you like, but it's still enough power to actually be able to power this up. Um, from that, we have one ethernet. This is your, uh, your internet essentially, that's coming out of my router. That goes into the one port, I believe on here. Yep, so the one port. And then your LAN port, this cable is going to my Apple TV. So if I just grab the remote and if we run a test again, and as you can see, so that's with the VPN running. And as you can see the location just there, Frankfurt. Now, clearly I'm not in Frankfurt, I'm in the UK. Um, so you can see that obviously the VPN is running. Now you can also see the speed. So this is typical for what you're gonna get. So your downloads generally are not gonna be more than say 10 to 15. Um, your uploads will vary, but for most people, as you as you'll know, for streaming is especially, uploads don't really necessarily matter that much. So anything two to four, whatever, that should be enough for for most streaming services. Um, but obviously, the downloads is the one where some people might find it's not fast enough. Um, if that's the case, then there are other routes out there where basically you can. Um, it doesn't actually allow you on this particular Orbi router. So these particular ones, whilst they do have OpenVPN uh, servers, they don't have clients. So the client one is the one that you actually need because that's where you're essentially installing the VPN um, onto the router for, for it to the, then use. Whereas the OpenVPN servers that they actually run on the Orbi routers, um, that's literally just for external access. So it basically gives you an external way of accessing any of your home network essentially um, securely. Um, so yeah, um, this is obviously the setup. Um, it's as simple as that, literally three cables. The rest of it, what I'll do is I'll do a screen recording and I'll show you on the phone as to basically how to set it up and everything. Okay, so for the rest of this video, what I'll do is I'll demonstrate on the phone. So first thing you have to obviously do is once you've plugged it in and everything as shown in the video previously, what you want to do is obviously connect to that particular Wi-Fi. So the Wi-Fi on this device will be enabled by default uh, when you first receive it. If you want to, you can disable the Wi-Fi for this particular router. That might actually help with speeds. However, I didn't want to do that because I don't want to be reconnecting this to, to a computer. And obviously if you disable the Wi-Fi, then at that stage, you have to then connect it to a physical device in order to access uh, the, uh, the default gateway or the router's uh, sort of homepage, if you like. So first thing you do is obviously connect to the, the router itself. What I'll do is I'll come out of this and I'll go back in. So the IP address that you want to type in is this one, 192.168.8.1. Once you navigate to that, you should get this, well, because I'm already logged in, um, you, what you will have to do is just log in initially. Um, I believe the original password that actually comes on these is good life. So G -O -O -D -L -I -F -E, or lowercase. So that's the original default gateway password. Um, obviously we would recommend that you change that as soon as you get the device. So this is your normal sort of um, homepage if you like and Basically, you've got all your various settings for your wireless settings, things like that. And essentially the one that we want is the one down here. So open VPN client. And this is where essentially you set up your VPNs and your status part is where you enable and disable it. So as you can see, um, I'm connected to uh, Winscribe Frankfurt. Um, and this one at the moment is used 107 megs um, down and 11 megs up. And your management page is basically where you go to add 
any additional ones. If you've not actually, so for the first time you come in, you'll see this option here where it says add a new OpenVPN configuration. That'll be on this first page because obviously you don't have any existing ones. So essentially all you do is you click on that. And what I did was I imported the uh, file um, straight from the website of my particular VPN client, so Winscribe. So I literally downloaded that to my phone Okay, so to download your config file, what you want to do is go to the Winscribe website, log in with your account, and then hit on the download button. Once you've clicked on download, you want to come down to where it says OpenVPN, click on that. And then what you want to do is obviously choose your location. So for example, Frankfurt Castle, um, UDP, you can leave it on, and port, you can basically choose whichever one you want. I think 443 is the most universal. Uh, and then Cypher, I don't think it actually makes any difference, but basically I just select the first one. The next thing is you want to hit on Download Config. This obviously downloads the config file. Save this into a location on your phone in your Downloads folder where you can then go and access it later. Um, what you'll also need to do is click on Get Credentials. Um, what that'll do is it'll give you a username and password. That's the username and password that you actually use. That is the file, config file that you download and then you literally just import that. After that, what it will do is it'll ask you for a username and password. Now the username and password um, isn't the one that um, you actually use to log into your VPN client. So it's actually a different one. It's, it's something that is given to you. It's usually the website for your VPN. So that's literally the only information that you import. So you name it, you put in the username, you put in the password and you hit save. Once you've saved it, you can then come here and you can literally switch between any of your various VPN clients. So as I say, Winscribe is a paid one, but the good thing about that particular one is that it's only $2 and that gives you access to one country's VPNs essentially and because I only need one it means that I'm not having to pay more for other clients that I, I'm never going to use um, so some of the other cheapest ones were still four pounds and they give you like 11 or 20 odd different servers it's kind of pointless if what you want to do is get the one that's closest to you that enables you to use it for whatever purpose you want to use it for there's no point in getting, for, for example, for me, there's no point for me getting one in America because it's going to be really slow by the time the connection goes to America and then comes back to me. The ping times are going to be sky high and obviously the uh, latency and everything is going to be higher and your speed's going to be really bad. So for that reason, I chose Germany because that's quite close to me and basically it works for everything I need it to work for. So that's basically the reasoning for me getting um, the Germany uh, server, if you like. Proton VPN is the free one that anybody can use. The one downside I did find with Proton was the fact that once you've actually used, say, two or three gig, you can continue to use it, but what you will find is it the, the speeds will fluctuate quite a bit. Sometimes it will give you, say, 40 meg and once you've used a bit of data and you, you, you've you been using it for quite a while, you'll probably find that your speeds drop down to, say, two or three megabits per second, which if you're using it for streaming anything, that's not fast enough. So for that reason, obviously, um, I'd recommend that you go with any, any paid one, essentially, because generally, because you're paying for it, you're going to at least get a sort of consistent speed. But as I say, the Proton VPN one, you can use that. I have tested it uh, on various servers. So we've got the Netherlands there. I believe that one's Japan and then also the Amer uh, the USA one. So I did test all three and with all three, I got a very similar thing where basically after a certain amount of usage, um, it will basically start to throttle you. Um, and basically, depending on what you use it for, if it's just for general browsing, whatever, then that's fine. But if you're using it to stream media, then that's not really gonna work because you'll probably end up with buffering. And on live, uh, broadcasts obviously buffering is the last thing you want so yeah uh, essentially you just come here you put input that now once you do actually enable a vpn it will take time um, so if i switch this once i if i was to switch this particular server to a different one it does take quite a lot of time for it to actually switch i'd say it probably it's probably between say one to two minutes um, and you'll get a load of error messages. And then when you see this sort of uh, prompt where 
basically you've got an IP address and then you've got data received and sent, that's when you know it's all up and live. But even still, um, the Apple TV won't update straight away. So it won't have the connection straight away. It'll probably take, as I say, between one and two minutes. And then once those one or two minutes have passed, then you should start to see the connection. So basically, um, especially if you're using this for streaming of any live events, essentially get your VPN early, uh, VPN on early, get it connected, and then you should be okay after that. Um, as I say, the only real issue that I've had with this particular setup is the fact that the speeds coming through onto the Apple TV because of the speed of the um, the throughput essentially because it's only a 300 Mbps um, it, it's not really fast enough to stream anything above 1080p and even 1080p occasionally if, if it fluctuates that might also suffer as well so that's basically the setup video um, what I will do is I'll also do a separate video on the VPN, um, just giving you details of the one that I use. It, it will be linked in the description down below. So if you want to obviously just follow the link, um, I believe that might actually give you a bit of a discount if you use the link down below. But if not, um, this obviously covers the router side of things and the separate one will basically give you details on the VPN in more, in more depth.